how are you? Lord Vyasa, me too. Happy to be here. It's wonderful to see a lot of familiar faces and friends. Some of you I haven't seen for a while. And there's a rumor going around. In fact, one of the distributors yesterday saw me out in front of Zenry and said, Wow! We heard a rumor that you left Elkin. <laughs> no, don't believe everything you hear. I have not left Elkin because this is still a fantastic organization filled with fantastic people and fantastic products. I want to get straight into our material tonight. I know that many of you are aware of how big the problem is that everybody in the world faces when it comes to water quality. But sometimes we forget. Sometimes it's easy to feel like everything's okay. And What's happening is that there's a lot of new information that's coming out about what's happening to water everywhere. In the United States, in the UK, Australia, Asia, Europe, doesn't matter. There are issues and this is why we chose the topic tonight, toxins in water. And I think most of you know that toxins are poisons. But first, let's refresh our memory. Water is life. You have to have water. There's only one thing more important than water. It's air. We have to breathe. If we don't have any air for about five minutes, our life is generally over. We need water. And if we don't have water for even as short as 24 hours, our system starts to go down. And then it goes down quickly. And it makes sense, because think about all the things that water does. Whoops. Too many slides. There we go. When we think about moving our joints, our elbow, our knees, our neck, water is the lubricant. Water is like oil in the sense that it keeps our joints moving freely. When you have a mouthful of saliva, it's water. When you perspire or sweat, it's water. Your body's trying to cool itself off. When you eat food, the water in your system is what digests the food and breaks it down so that your body can assimilate it. And Here's something really important. Water is a detoxifier. Water helps us to get rid of all the things that shouldn't be in our body. It's how our body cleanses itself. So when you think about all the things that water does, it's no wonder that every single one of us needs water every single day. Again, if we've forgotten, it's important to remember that most people are between 65 and 70% water by weight. So if you're somebody who big, strong, heavy, weighs 100 kg, 70 kg of that weight is water. Water is what we are made of. 
If you look at the numbers, the average adult has about 42 liters of water in their body. We need to drink at least two to three liters so that we have enough water to make our bodies work properly. Only 20% of the water that we need comes from food. About 80% comes from the things we drink. Whether you like coffee, teitari, or some other beverage, that is where we get our water. And when you look at this, I won't take the time to go through all of it, but it's amazing how much water is found throughout our bodies. The United Nations a few years ago issued a report, and it's, it's about 200 pages. And the title of the report, this is the front cover page, it's called Sick Water. And it goes on to talk about what is happening all over the earth when it comes to water. So we're going to ask this question, why is water sick? Let's just take a few minutes and look at some of the things that are happening back then and now. So when we think back to our parents, our grandparents, they had to deal with things like bacteria, virus, parasites. It was there. It's been there for a long, long time. They were also beginning to use chemicals. And the process of chlorination or adding chlorine to drinking water started over a hundred years ago. So not just our parents, but our grandparents, our great-grandparents was facing this issue. Today, there are other types of contaminants that are showing up in drinking water. Things that we call inorganic minerals and heavy metals. Things like lead, nitrate, arsenic, mercury, things that are actually serious toxins or poisons to the human body. Medication, wow. A lot of people have never thought about this. Let me ask you a question. How many of you, please raise your hand, have ever visited the doctor or a clinic? How many? Nobody? Maybe you don't understand my question. How many of you have ever taken medication? Like aspirin or antibiotics or... Almost everybody. Everybody. And when we take medication, it doesn't matter what the medication is. You're going to read all of these things here. What happens to the medicines or the medication that we take? What happens is they pass through the body. Most medication is only absorbed about 50%. And the rest passes through the body. So that medication ends up in the water, in the toilet. Or, if you haven't finished all your medication, people generally flush it down the toilet. And what happens is the medications go into the water supply and somebody else drinks it. What about washing the clothes? I won't ask you, but how many of you wash your clothes? Everybody. Everybody washes their clothes. What happens to the detergents? What happens to the softening that we put into the detergents? What happens to the coloring that they use to dye material 
For example, all you ladies are wearing your beautiful red elkin jackets. That color comes from dye. And some of that dye will eventually end up in the water supply. Here's something that most people don't know. There's another new contaminant that the entire scientific community worldwide is getting very concerned with. Plastic. For those of us, I live in Selangor, Selangor has discontinued giving plastic bags when you go to the shops. If you want a plastic bag, you have to pay 20 cents for one bag. And if you look at some of these statistics, 8 million tons, 8 million tons go into the ocean every year. People who eat shellfish are eating about 11,000 plastic fragments in the seafood that they eat. Look at this number. Every 60 seconds, one million plastic bottles are sold. A million bottles a minute are sold worldwide. And what happens when you finish whatever's in that bottle? It gets thrown away. Where does it go? Here's something even more scary. Now, I don't know, can you see this poor fellow out in the middle of the water here in his boat? Yeah. It looks like he's One of them. <laughs> on a trash dump, but he's actually in the Pacific Ocean. And this was 2004, 14 years ago. The problem is getting worse. They are now talking about microscopic plastic fibers getting into the water and there's a million tons of these tiny fibers that are going into the water all around the world. Have any of you ever thought that you are drinking microscopic bits of plastic? It's true. I'm going to show you one more slide that you might be surprised at. World Health Organization. 90% of the popular brands contained tiny pieces of plastic. They analyzed 259 bottles, 19 locations, 9 countries, and there was an average of 325 pieces of plastic in every liter of bottled water. Look at this one. One bottle of Nestle Pure Life, 10,000 pieces of plastic per liter. Now, if you go buy bottled water, it doesn't matter what brand, and you look at it, it looks perfectly clear. But remember, you can only see something as small as about 20 microns. If it's smaller than 20 microns, you can't see it. There were 10,000 pieces of plastic in this bottle that WHO analyzed, but you couldn't see it. It was that tiny. So we need to understand that the water we drink is unfortunately contaminated. We have to make sure that we are not drinking somebody else's medication, we are not drinking plastic, we are not drinking heavy metal. We need to make sure that we're drinking water. 
And who remembers what the formula for water? What is water? H2. H2. Oh, it's not supposed to be plastic in it and medicine. In the U.S., I was just there recently, there's a new product on the market, vitamin water. And then there was another new product, diet water. What? Diet water? Are you kidding? But everybody seems to think that if you call your water something special, people are going to buy it. And people do. Let's just take a quick look at some of the toxins that are very commonly found everywhere. And I want, I want to emphasize, this isn't just about Malaysia. We've lived here, my family and I, for 14 years. We love Malaysia. But Malaysia is like everywhere else in the world. There's good things and there's some not so good things. And when it comes to water, the not so good things are everywhere. Batteries. How many of you have a cellular phone, a hand phone? How many have a hand phone? Ah, okay. There's a battery in your hand phone. And when you're done with this hand phone and you get a new hand phone, what happens? Sooner or later, the chemicals in the battery are going to go into the water. It happens. When we look at things like the dye in paint, when we look at pesticides, we look at lamps, manganese. Here's a new one, relatively new. Used to be gasoline had lead in it. And now gasoline is unleaded. But the lead has been replaced by manganese. And manganese increases the risk of contracting cancer significantly. So we got rid of the lead problem and now we've created a manganese problem. As I said, being from the U.S., I get all kinds of information from different services. As a member of the WQA Board of Directors, we get special updates. And when you look at this, excessive lead levels found in 2,000 water systems across all 50 states, six million people have harmful levels of lead. And there is no safe level of lead. No safe level. Here is information from here in Malaysia. Manganese. 135% above the safe limit. Iron, lead, 460%. Nickel, 240%. This is from one of the most respected newspapers in, in this whole region. So this isn't something that we can take very lightly. We don't have to worry about it. I'm sure that most of you people remember what happened about, oh, two and a half, three years ago in Kwantan because of the bauxite mining. Again, toxins in the treated water, not raw water, treated water. The water that goes to people's homes in their pipes. The water people are supposed to be able to drink and bathe and brush their teeth. When you consider all of these issues, and when you consider that, as I said in the beginning, the word toxin means poison, look what happens 
when people drink water with toxins. And this isn't uncommon. There are tens of millions of people in Bangladesh, in India, in the Mekong River Delta, who are drinking water with tiny amounts of arsenic. But before we talk about arsenic, let's talk about lead. Remember what I just said. The EPA stresses there is no safe level of lead exposure. No safe level. It doesn't matter how low the level is. If there's any, it's not safe. Arsenic, what we were just talking about, what happens? causes cancer, skin cancer, bladder cancer, lung cancer, kidney cancer, liver cancer, prostate cancer. The photographs of those people back here two slides ago are from microscopic amounts of arsenic in their drinking water. And this is what happens. So. It doesn't matter where we live. In Malaysia, and again, this was four years ago, the number is higher now, 2.5 million Malaysians suffer from kidney disease. And water affects your kidneys. Your kidneys have to purify what goes through your bloodstream and goes through your urine. So when we put more garbage into our bodies, our kidneys have to work harder. And it's no wonder when you look at this number, two and a half million, four and a half years ago, the number is higher. Remember I talked about medication and some of you said you don't take medication? Maybe. I think almost everybody takes medication of some kind. And it's been discovered that these drugs or these medicines are everywhere. Pharmaceuticals in wastewater. Some, remember I said about 50% of the medicine we take is absorbed and the rest passes out of the body. Some medicines, 90% ends up in the wastewater. 90%. And that water goes downstream and eventually somebody else drinks it. Seriously. People who don't have a good water treatment system in their home, they are drinking tiny amounts of other people's medicine. This is serious. This is from the Sunday Times here in Malaysia. Global drinking water contaminant exposed drugs, not illegal drugs, not cocaine and heroin and shabba or what is that what you call it? Yeah. They're talking about medicine. Water is getting contaminated. This is National Geographic. Many of you have seen this before. Some of you may not. This is a representation of the different drugs found in the fish near Chicago. Chicago is considered the second city in the United States. And yet, it doesn't matter. Because whether you're from Chicago, or Kuala Lumpur, or London, or Sydney, or Beijing, you're going to have to face the fact that there are toxins in the water. And we have to make sure that we're not putting those into our bodies. What about this one? I, I couldn't believe this when I found this article. 
Watering your garden with city water injects pharmaceuticals into your veggies. So remember, the traces of these drugs are in the tap water. So if you have a small plot or a big one, and you're growing your own vegetables, and you're using city water, those vegetables are pulling up the pharmaceutical drugs. This is real. This isn't a joke. This is for real. We could talk for a long time, but one of the things I want to point out is that there are 34 million different chemicals being used. 80,000 of them are commercial organics and up to 62,000 different chemicals may affect our endocrine system. 62,000 different chemicals can affect how our body reacts. And it's no wonder that so many people are facing issues, health problems, because our bodies are under attack. Look at these very quickly. Pesticides, synthetics, plasticizers. Again, we talked about pharmaceuticals, shampoo, soap, medicine. So many things, and it all goes into the water. All of it. Sooner or later, it all gets into the water. And we don't want to be drinking it. We don't want this stuff in our bodies. Here's a real quick article talking about male fish being feminized. Male fish, frogs, seafood are actually growing female body parts. So think about that. And it's happening to people. Because fish, frogs, things like this are living organisms. We're all living organisms. And there's a lot of research that shows that these endocrine disruptors, I don't want to be too scientific, but these endocrine disruptors interrupt our hormones and change what's happening in our bodies. One more point that I want to make. There's something called autoimmune disease. Autoimmune means that your body actually attacks itself. Asthma, type 2 diabetes, rheumatoid arthritis. These are examples of autoimmune disease. There's something that, I, and I need help from, hey Alvin, I'm gonna, Alvin Tang. How do you say, if you know, in either Bahasa and or Chinese or Tamil, how do you talk about autism? Do you, do you know the word autism? Same word. Autisma. Autisma, okay. When I was in university, one in 10,000 children had autism. One in 10,000. That eventually became one in 1,000. Then I was reading some research that one in 500 kids get autism. Then one in 100. Now the latest numbers is one out of every 50 children has some sort of autismal disease. One out of 50. Do you think it's magic that this happened? Or do you think maybe there's something causing these things? 
So, if you ever had a chance to read this book, it's unbelievable. And it's safe to say that when I look at this audience here, at least 10 of you, statistically, have some sort of autoimmune disease. It's statistics. It's math. And we may not even know it, but it's real and it's happening. So we've spent the last minutes talking about this problem. We've absolutely shown that there are toxins, all different kinds of toxins in the water. Not just toxins, plastic bits that we're all eating and drinking. There's stuff in water that we shouldn't put into our bodies. Because again, we need just H2O. Let's take the last few minutes. Let's talk about what kind of water treatment do we need to think about? Some people think boiling water is great. Boiling water just, in part, kills microorganisms. That's all it does. Boiling water doesn't remove anything else. It just kills germs, if I can use that word. Some of the alkaline water machines, these ion machines that are getting so heavily advertised, most of them don't do anything. A few have some filters and tricks and gimmicks, but most don't do anything. Carbon with sediment, now well, it can remove some particulates. It can't remove biologicals, it can't remove heavy metals, can't remove pharmaceuticals. We can go down this list, you can read it easier than I can talk it. There's really only one system on this list that can handle all of the different contaminants that are here. That is reverse osmosis. What Elkin has been promoting for nearly 20 years, BioPure RO systems. So, I think most of you are very familiar with the diagram here. But the fact is that reverse osmosis systems, Elkin's BioPure system can remove virtually all contaminants. Contaminants, thank you. Uh, contaminants that are one ten thousandth of one micron. And a micron is one millionth of a meter. A little tiny piece of sand on the beach is 80 microns. 80. One micron is 80 times smaller than the little piece of sand, and the membrane can remove contaminants 10,000 times smaller. So again, the maths get a little bit crazy, but it's 0 0.0001 microns. That's why BioPure RO systems actually purify molecule by molecule. They remove virtually everything. It doesn't matter what it is. And it's not just because I say it or Alvin says it or CP Shin or any of our other certified water specialists. It's because we always make sure that we have the S300 gold seal. That is your assurance from the Water Quality Association that your BioPure system 
does what it is supposed to do. Remove contaminants. Gives you only H2O. We could go on and on and on about Reader's Digest, Trusted, Brand, Frost and Sullivan, the Geneva Inventions Awards, so many different awards over the years. But rest assured that you cannot buy a better system at any price in any country than BioPure. It is what your body needs for good health. And this is backed up with expert quality service. Every high quality product, whether it's an automobile, a wristwatch, a home, every quality product needs service. What's more important than your health? What's more important than the quality of the water that you drink? So you need to make sure your purification system is functioning at peak performance. And we have an organization that is dedicated to doing just that. So I've reached the end of my time. I promised everybody that I wouldn't go more than 30 or 35 minutes. Um, I think those of you who have heard me speak before, you know I could keep going for a few hours. I love talking to people about good water and good health. But this is all the time that we have for tonight. I would like to ask you all to please improve the quality of your life by improving the quality of the water that you drink. So thank you and I will hopefully see you all again real, real soon, okay? Thank you. Okay, so in the key, I will edit the topic. Yes. Yes.